robbing the robber. The city was racked by riots and rioters rampaged the city with loot, rape, and even murder. Friends turned against friends, indifferent community. Though they had lived in friendly, neighborliness for years even decades. The city was never plunged in such fiery riot and police were unsuccessful in controlling it. Often, they looked the other way with their rioters belonged to their community. In one such rioting incident a jeweler's shop and his house on upper floor was attacked late at night. They looted their shop stabbing those who resisted and even put fire in some portions of the jewelry shop and house. When the rioters had escaped with their booty and blood on their hands, it was a couple of hours after midnight. One of the neighbors who was not involved in the riots. He had pretend to be of the other community, opposed to the jewelers. He came to have a look on the aftermath perhaps. Police had not come yet and in any case, the rioters had escaped with their loot. The landscape was painful and bizarre with burnt out portions of the shop which included furniture and materials. Some cheap silver jewelry and stones were scattered on the floor and even on the streets facing the shop. The jewelry of gold, diamond, platinum and precious stones were of course carefully assembled and carried away by the looters. Shankar was having a good look on the devastation with some sympathy for the victim. He saw a glint in the drain flowing in front of the shop, the drain was covered though a portion was exposed due to a broken cement cover. He carefully searched for the source of the glint which was a reflection of some shiny object which reflected the dim light of a distant street lamp. He looked to the left and right, with wetted breath, he ferreted out the object from the muddy drain. It was a brick of gold which had perhaps fallen in the drain in the hubbub and chaos of the fiery attack of the rioters who had somehow overlooked the brick which had slid into the drain during the rampage. He put the brick in his trouser pocket. He went back to his house, saw the gold brick shining in glory after a good wash. He had found a treasure. His mind was soon assailed by the thoughts of its detection by police or even neighbors. He was afraid even of being robbed of his own robbed booty or police might take him into the custody on the charge of looting the jewelers which was not far away from his house. He remembered a close friend who lived in a distant suburb, not racked by riots. He rode on a bicycle on the street, carrying his treasure, wrapped carefully with paper and cloth, giving it the shape of some grocery and vegetables which he might have purchased. He went to his friend Ram Sharan Shah who ran a shop, before sunrise. He knocked on the bolted door of the sleepy house cum shop. After several knocks, the door was opened by his friend who was surprised by this untimely visit of Shankar. He invited Shankar in. After narrating the incident and how he had acquired this gold brick Shankar asked him to keep it in his safe custody as Ram Sharan's area was not affected by riots and police inquiries. Ram Sharan agreed to help his friend. He was also a money lender giving loans by taking the ornaments of the debtors as a security. After this a week passed. Riots had subsided. There was a peace in the area, punctured by the cries and misery of those who had suffered heavy loss of life, property, and friendship. Shankar was an assistant in the municipal office. He thought of taking his treasure back from his friend, Ram Sharan who was a shrug judge of the quality of the precious metal. He had to test the jewelry offered to him by the debtors as security. Shankar went to his friend and asked for his precious treasure which he had kept in Ram Sharan's safe custody. Shankar did get his brick back, several weeks passed and weeks stretched into months and even a couple of years. One day, Shankar wanted to encash the magic brick as he was in dire need to clear some debts incurred in marrying his sister and renovation of the house. He was shocked to find the brick as ordinary brass which was gold-plated. He came to know this when he went to a jeweler to sell it. The jeweler said, I am sorry, this gold brick is fake. Perhaps your friend has replaced the original with the gold-plated one. Shankar realized with a deep shock that all that glitters is not gold. Shankar digested this shock of his destiny, he rationalized by arguing that God had punished him as he had almost stolen the brick from the jeweler's shop, ravaged by the rioters. H. sense of loss were mitigated by this thought. Though he bore his grudge against his friend for deceiving him. He went on working as an assistant, with few promotions, educating his children, marrying his daughter with limited middle-class accumulation he could afford. 
he was a contented man, working hard in his office, supplementing his income by his part-time work as an accountant in number of shops to meet the demands of his household. On the other hand, Ram Sharan prospered immensely. He expanded his shops in a network spread over different areas in the city and the suburban. He built a good house in a good suburb. He married his daughters in a decent way, got his only child educated in a private and costly school and college, brought up in the lap of luxury, his son unsurprisingly became a spoiled brat. In this period, Shankar did come to Ram Sharan to find out the truth whether he had given a fake brick as a substitute of the originals. Ram Khanra replied with an angry emphasis, How dare you accused me of deceiving you? I returned the original brick to you, I swear. Perhaps, the brick was replaced by someone in course of your storage of your brick over time. By accusing me, you are giving a blow to my prestige and our friendship. Our friendship of so many years is now, over. Shankar couldn't do anything but returned back with hurt which was healed by rationalizing the events as God's will and his destiny. Shankar went on leaving his life of an assistant in municipal office. He had accepted his fate and was in a way contented though he had a nagging doubt regarding Ram Sharan's deception, considering his fast prosperity after riots and Shankar's deposit of the brick in Ram Sharan's custody. Fifteen years later, the scenario was changed. Ram Sharan was rich but his son whom he had provided costly education had turned out to be a good-for-nothing young man with all the costly, bad habits and addictions associated with a rich, spoiled youth. He gambled, dated with a number of costly girls who are attracted to him due to his generous spending and throwing gala drunken parties. He hardly had any time and respect for his aging and ailing father who had a stroke resulting in paralysis of half of his body. He could hardly supervise his own business which was in a bad shape as his son was interested only in burning the wealth and the goodwill. Ram Sharan was a broken person, in body, wealth, and spirit which was corroded by his guilt. Ram Sharan's condition became worse and he thought he may not survive long. One day Shankar was surprised to get an invitation from his ailing friend Ram Sharan. He found Ram Sharan sick, lonely, and in pain due to asthma. His eyes were moist with guilt as he spoke to Shankar, taking his hands, the brick you had kept with me for safe custody was pure gold and I had substituted it with fake, a gold-plated brass brick of the same shape and size. Ram Sharan continued after a break of painful hiccups, I told you my story, it is a story of my ruin, health, wealth, and my only son is wayward beyond redemption. Further I am bleeding with guilt for deceiving a friend for the lure of gold. Mortgaging my house I raised money to buy a real gold brick like the one you gave me. And, you must accept it, after all it is yours, unless you accept I won't have peace, he handed over the brick to a reluctant Shankar with tears in his eyes and bad hiccups shaking his body. Shankar took the gold telling, relieve, and smiley Ram Khan ran, I take this brick only for your peace and your insistence. I will do everything to see that you recover your health he left hurriedly after giving a hug. His son returned after six months from his luxurious round-the-world trip. When he saw the condition of his father, now paralyzed and with fear of impeding death, he was shocked and touched, knowing that his father might not have much life left. When his father told him about the story of the gold brick and its return to his father's friend, Shankar to whom it belonged, he started crying with remorse and love for his father. This event changed him completely. His father started recovering. Father and son conducted their business with responsibility and ethics. Shankar was equally touched and transformed. After all, the brick didn't belong to him, in a way, he had stolen from the jeweler's shop, ravaged by riot. He didn't want to keep this stolen good and went to the jeweler's family which was reduced to middle class level, in fact low middle class level. The main person, the head was long dead and his children ran an ordinary shop with low profits in a small town in the suburb. The jeweler's children didn't want to accept this gift or returned off their property. They were happy in consciences, after all, this brick was not theirs. It was made out of exorbitant profits and even cheating and adulteration, normal for them. On Shankar's insistence, the jeweler took the brick but made a trust for service and relief those affected by riots and disasters, man-made, or natural. 
they took only a token of 20% of the brick as their own. Societies is often entangled in a chain of problem, one robber robbing the other but when this chain is reversed by compassion and contribution, there is a positive current both at individual and society as well. This story brings out both types of chain and current.